everybody, welcome to the Big Sniper episode. You guys have been arguing and commenting a lot under this video and in private messages, so I'm going to try to clear up all the myths and misconceptions about the sniper rifles. First off, I need to apologize because my silencer episode was very wrong and bad, so I'm going to redo it and redo it right so that you guys get the right information before we start this sniper episode. Let's see if we can do it in under 30 seconds. Silencers do not reduce the damage for SMGs or assault rifles, they only reduce the effective range, and since the range is related to damage, it's a safe assumption to assume that if you're shooting at somebody with a silencer on these guns, you're probably doing minimum damage unless you're really close to them. Since light machine guns and sniper rifles don't have any sort of range damage loss, the silencer does reduce the damage for these. It takes off 10 damage points per bullet for the LMGs and 20 per bullet for the sniper rifles. Okay, so it was a little more than 30 seconds, but whatever. Let's let's get to the sniper rifles. I'm changing this episode up a bit. There have been some pl complaints that there isn't enough gameplay or examples of the guns I'm talking about. So while I blab about numbers and other stuff, I'm going to show some gameplay intermittently. But first, we need to discuss one very simple, important, yet hard to believe fact. Okay, say it with me, people. All sniper rifles in Modern Warfare 2 have the exact same base damage. That means every single sniper rifle does 70 damage per shot. The difference in your one-hit kills and in your rifles is in the body multipliers, and they all have very vastly different multipliers, which makes it look like they do different amounts of damage. And yes, you can all get... <coughs> and yes, all of them can get one-shot kills without stopping power. For sniper rifles, stopping power more or less undoes the damage loss caused by a silencer. So for this bet, whatever the setup we're using, we're assuming a normal base damage of 70. Well, for starters, let's discuss the intervention. It does 70 damage, and its body multipliers look something like this. The head, neck, and chest all have 1.5x multipliers. The stomach has a 1.1x multiplier, and everything else is 1x. So without stopping power, the regions in red are a one-hit kill. And with stopping power, these regions are a one-hit kill. The intervention is often said to be the most accurate sniper. This is not necessarily true because each sniper rifle in this game is almost perfectly accurate to its crosshairs. However, each gun handles differently. They all have different recoils and settle times and sway, etc., etc. And I gotta tell you, I like the way this gun handles and so do a lot of other people. This is often the sniper of choice for pros. The gun's only two weaknesses are a slow rate of fire and a relatively small clip size. The Barrett 50 cal is statistically identical to the intervention in the amount of damage it does and its body multipliers. For this reason and for time concerns, I'm not going to redo the whole hit chart thing. It's exactly the same as the intervention. If you want to see it, just go back and look at it. The Barrett may have the same damage statistics, but a few other things are different. Like if you take into consideration the time it takes for the Barrett to settle back to perfect shooting position, it still shoots faster than the intervention and is just as accurate. It also has a much larger clip which allows for more shots before reload. The only real flaw to this gun is its rather ugly kick. Uh, newbies tend to pull the trigger really fast and they get a lot of unpredictable recoil. And I gotta tell you, this gun doesn't handle quite as good as the intervention. It's a little bit funny feeling. And the choice between these two is really one of personal preference, but I tend to go for the 50 caliber just because it has a higher rate of fire and that's a pretty important statistic. The next sniper on the list is the WA-2000. It, like all other snipers, has a base damage of 70s, and its body multipliers look something like this. The head, neck, and chest all have multipliers of 1.5x, while everything else has a multiplier of 1x. That means that these are the regions where you get one-hit kills without stopping power, and these are the regions where you get one-hit kills with stopping power. And if you notice that the graph didn't change, you should give yourself a cookie. Putting stopping power on this gun won't save you any shots at all. It still takes the same amount of shots to kill with or without stopping power. It is for this reason the WA-2000 kills in the same region without stopping power or with stopping power and a silencer attached. This makes it a very versatile weapon. It also has a high rate of fire and relatively low recoil, and the clip size is average. That's why it's my personal sniper of choice. If you see me sniping online, this is the gun I'm going to be using. Also, you can do some other fun things with it, like if you put an ACOG scope on it and slide a hand for quick scoping, you can use it like the bolt-action rifles from Call of Duty's past. As long as you hit the person in the region, it's a one-hit kill, and even if it's not, you can squeeze the trigger twice and get two-hit real quick. And it pisses people off a lot when they get killed with this sort of thing, and I enjoy that. 
the last sniper rifle on the list is the M21 EBR. Even though it might not seem like it, it also does 70 damage per shot. The reason it seems a bit weak is because it has very bad multipliers. It has a 1.5x multiplier for the head and a 1.1x for the neck. Everything else is 1x. That means without stopping power, you get your one-hit kills only with headshots, and with stopping power, you get one-hit kills with head and neck shots. This is the sprayer sniper rifle of choice. Since it typically requires two shots to kill people, uh, most people burn through their ammo supply really quickly. This sniper rifle has by far the least recoil and the highest sniper rate of any of them relative to same insane amounts of recoil. Its only real weakness is the multiplier problem which requires the frequent two shot kill thing. And believe me, that is a very major weakness. However, this is the sniper of choice if you're playing hardcore. In hardcore, since you have a lot less health, it'll always kill in one hit, it shoots fast, and it's very accurate. So it all comes down to who's using this gun and what's the situation. Remember that the chest and stomach multipliers are just that. My diagrams are a tad limited on what I can show, but shots to the shoulders, thighs, hips, groin, and lub handles really don't count. They won't give you the multiplier you want, and they won't kill in one hit. You have to hit them squarely, or it doesn't work. And no matter what I say about a gun's statistics, you should probably use whatever gun and whatever setup feels best for you, because all of these are excellent guns, and you really can't handicap them too much by changing your perks or whatever. So whatever feels best for you is going to be whatever works best for you. And that's it for this episode. Come back next time, and we're going to discuss care packages and emergency airdrops. And also, if my voice sounded different this time, it's because my stupid dog ate my microphone. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. There you'll find the latest updates from our premier directors and the Machinima Respawn team.